Hi everyone, this is the second in the series on how Canadian government works. This is the video which I've attempted to make four or five times now. And every time I made it because of problems with YouTube it didn't work. So hopefully this is the time it works. Second of all, let me apologize for the hat. But if you saw what was underneath the hat, it's scarier than the hat is. So hence the hat. Bad hair day. So this video is on municipal structures in Canada. Well, what can we say about those? Well, two different things. The first thing I'm going to say about those is every province have its own unique municipal structure, but there is some common themes. The most common theme is that municipalities are corporations in Canada, and their corporations owned because a corporation has to be owned by the electorate of the municipality. Um, so you'll see, you know, the corporation of the city of Toronto, the corporation of the town of Huntsville, whatever. And what that basically is saying, that it's a structure, it's not a pro for-profit corporation, it's a non-for-profit corporation, but it's owned by the people of the municipality. The this has a few very interesting um, consequences. The first is that in reality, a lot of people misunderstand this and say, "Well, it's a corporation; it must be for profit, or you must run it as a corporation." Neither one of these uh, thoughts I'm a big fan of for a number of different reasons. I don't need to go into them now, but. There is a number of different reasons. The other thing is that the electors of the corporation, how do they express themselves? Well, usually with corporations, you elect a board of governor and they make policy decisions. In the case of municipal co councils, you elect a municipal council and the municipal council makes policy decisions and the electorate of the city town region whatever meets once every three to four years in Canada and hold the municipal election to elect members to serve in the council. So that's interesting because it's different than any other body of government in Canada. And the franchise is different in, than any other body of government in Canada. The franchise for municipalities is such that you cannot be a member of only one if you qualify more than once. So the franchise for the federal and provincial government is such that if you are, if your main residence is the city of Toronto, say Toronto Centre is your federal riding, that would be the provincial riding as well because they are the same, then you can only vote in Toronto Centre, no matter where else you hold property, where else you have property, or where else you may live. This is not entirely the case for municipal governments. If I live in Toronto Centre but I have a cottage in Muskoka, in a rental place in Mississauga, I have the right to vote in Toronto Centre because that's where my address is. I have the right to vote because I own land in Muskoka and in Mississauga. This as long as I'm not voting twice for the same office. So the classic example of this is if you have a house in Huntsville, house in Bracebridge, you would only be vote you would be voting for Council of Huntsville, Council of Bracebridge. But for school board you would be voting twice for the same school board. So you would only vote where you live for the school board. Um, there's a few other interesting elements of municipal structures. Um, they're not uniform throughout Canada. But there are some general trends, and the general trend is that, first of all, there is a upper level of municipal council of some type. 
um, usually a county or a district municipality which performs a broad range of services. This is not uniform throughout Canada. We do have this uh, phenomenon called separate cities or single tier municipalities, where particularly in Ontario, a number of municipalities does not have an upper level, upper tier municipality as part of it. Toronto has no upper tier municipality as part of it. Um, Northern Ontario, most municipalities do not have an upper tier um, municipality as part of it. And then there's a number of lower tier municipalities as well. So, for example, in, Tro in Mississauga or in Mississauga, you have, I believe it's Peel Region, yeah, it's Peel Region, which is the upper tier. Different provinces make different arrangements. The classic weird arrangement is always Montreal, which you have actually five levels of municipal government. You have the urban, let me just see if I can remember this all. The urban agglomeration, the urban community, Then there's an island-wide government of some type. Then there's the individual cities, and then there's the boroughs. It's, it's a truly bizarre arrangement, but I'm going to do a case study, I believe, on the city of Montreal later on. So I won't get too awfully much into that. Sorry, my hair is really bugging me right now. Um, I need to get a cut tomorrow. Um, but you have a number of different tiers throughout. And then the last point I want to make is that in some places you have special purpose bodies or municipal corporations which are subordinate to municipal governments delivering services. For example, the Toronto Transit Commission is a municipal corporate municipal ran owned corporation. Um, owned by the city of Toronto to deliver services in that area. So this like you can have provincial crown corporations can also have municipal um, owned corporations. So that's more or less what I wanted to say about municipal structure in Canada. Uh, I'm going to be doing a commentary later on today I think. Um, and the next video should be on schedule next week um, and hopefully my hair will be resolved by then so I don't have to wear this stupid hat. Thank you.